Okay, so we're going to go through testing sensors, uh, motors, and everything um, using an RCX. So I'll go ahead and turn that on. And I'm going to open BrickX Command Center. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, mine's going to be on COM2. Um, this will be, if you're using a USB adapter, it'll be whatever, you know, um, whatever COM port you're set up for. And once we're in there, we're not actually going to do any programming. We're just going to go to direct control. Okay, now that we have direct control up, we can actually go through and set our sensors. Um, we can test outputs. So let's say motor A, we want to try it. There we go, we can adjust the speed. And um, the main thing we're going to be testing is sensors. So actually, one, two, three, four, all of these sensors have been repaired. They had wires that were mangled. Um, and uh, I have another video on this if you want to check it out because I found really nice wire to use. Um, it just works great. And then you've got this little bit of heat shrink at the back. But um, besides that, they're as good as new. Um, a lot better than throwing them in the trash. So first let's set sensor one to a rotation sensor. Um, so that's what I have there, which on this would be angle. And um, uh, we'll set it to read the angle. And once you've done that, you can actually use a built-in feature to the RCX. You can hit the view button. So now it's reading port one and it says zero because it's not, it hasn't been turned any. Um, I'm going to go ahead and turn on output B, which uh, turns on this control panel down here. And then I have the red micro motor is hooked to the switch here. So if we turn this on, you can see it starts counting. And I'm going to use the software to reverse the direction of B. And then you can see it starts counting backwards. And eventually it'll uh, get into negative numbers and continue counting down. Um, these are super useful if you've got like a robotic arm or something you're trying to track the position. So there we go. It goes into the negative. All right, so I'm going to turn that off. Um, next, we've got a light sensor on port two. So I'm going to change this to reflection. And we can just read it as a percent. So if I press the view button again, it's going to jump over to the port two. And right now we're reading 53%, something like that. And I've got a light um, on this switch here. And it jumps all the way up to 100. And then next we've got port 3. And I'm going to set that to switch, which is going to be a, a touch sensor. And I'm, I'll leave it on raw. And each of these sensors has a raw reading. The, rota the rotation sensor is kind of hard to make sense of because the number is kind of jump around um, but for a touch sensor you can see right now it's 1023 which is basically an open circuit so let's hook up the DACTA touch sensor that was pretty much the only sets that these were released in and it goes down to 188 and open circuit so these are just um, they're just on and off there's not really any granularity to it. Now this is the touch sensor you would receive with like an RCX Mindstorm set and um, it'll be right around 1020 when it's open and then I'm just gonna ever so slightly start pressing it and you can see it, there's some granularity there so that's really pushing it down at 55 and I'm just gonna slowly let off 
So that gives you a little bit of wiggle room if you want it to get a, a good pressed before it does a function or if you want it to just barely be touched. Maybe you could do under 500 raw and then um, you know make something happen from that. Um, we can also just set these to boolean. So you can see it says 0, 1, 0, 1, simple enough. So that's touch sensors. And then we've also got the temperature sensor. And all three of these are um, passive sensors. They don't need any power. Um, ports one and two are, are light and rotation sensors are active. So they're actually powered. Um, so that's why we have to use this program to to set up the sensors. Um, otherwise you could just set it to switch and, and, and go to raw and you'd be able to use either um, temperature or touch. Um, so all right, now we're going to use the temperature. Um, we use Fahrenheit because we're in the US. <laughs> um, so right now we're using 75.5 degrees ish, jumping around a little bit. And it takes a little while to change so I'm going to hold on to the end. And you can see it slowly rising up so we're up to 77, 78, 79, 80 degrees and then it'll still climb up a little bit and then it'll slowly start counting back down now that we're now that I'm not holding it and it, it takes a little while before it actually gets back down um, now we've got the I got motor C hooked to this piece here and this is the um, I'm trying to remember what they called it. It was in the Technic Space Shuttle set um, and some other sets like that. And it's just um, an LED kind of uh, fiber optic. Um, these are all fiber optics here. I'll, I'll just turn it on the show. <laughs> um, so right now it's probably right between two and that's why it's not doing anything. So let's turn on. I'm going to set the speed of motor C way down and then turn it on. I don't know how well it's going to show up on camera, um, but it's going to go through each one. So if you're testing one, you know, you can kind of really slow down the motor and make sure that all eight are lighting up. Um, I've never taken one apart, but I imagine there's like uh, maybe two kind of tracks that go around it that it's getting using to power the LED and the LED is moving around. Um, I don't really know. Um, but uh you know before i sell anything on Bricklink or something i'm definitely going to make sure everything's working absolutely 100 percent um and then like i said we can increase the speed get a little light show so those are pretty cool all right now i'm going to use the black switch to give us some power to this terminal here and these are your sound elements and you would put it on there and it's not doing anything now but the top actually spins and that's how you set which sound you want so that's, this is the space sound element so you've got two space sounds and then if it's in the middle it's just off Now I've got this guy, I believe this is the emergency sounds. We got two siren sounds. Um, this is another one here, which does not work. <laughs> it doesn't even start to play a sound and it, it basically just kind of shorts it out. And uh, I'd like to be able to repair it. It's got these two little clips here I've tried to kind of push them in and I haven't really put much time to it but I'd like to be able to find out if there's if there's a way to repair them um, this one works but not very well so like this whole side it should be playing right now you can get a little bit it's just dirty um, so if I can figure out a way to get this apart this one can probably be fixed and another output and these are pretty rare and they go for a lot and um, 
especially if you can get it you've got a the bottom piece here and that snaps in and you've got the top piece which these things break pretty easy um, and I've got two of these here alright so this is the good one and you can see that's the speed that, that it rotates and then this one just doesn't do anything <laughs> and it doesn't even dim the lights or anything like uh so it's not shorted uh, i guess it's an open circuit or something but um yeah i'm not gonna try to <laughs> pull it apart and repair it uh, maybe there's a way maybe i'll figure it out one day but um i'm not just gonna go hacking at it to try to fix it <laughs> So that's pretty much it. I uh, hope you enjoyed this, um, whatever this is, <laughs> this uh, test apparatus. Um, like I said, I, I bought and sold mostly these elements on eBay and Bricklink. Um, and I was very, very um, adamant about testing everything. If it was just a little bit flaky, I might keep it and uh, play around with it. But I'm not going to sell it. Um, you know, I, I want anything I sell to be top-notch quality, and I didn't—I never sold any repaired items, um, just because um, I just never did. And when I sold, I would always stipulate whether something had the plastic, more plastic insulation for the wires, or if it was the rubber insulation, because the rubber insulation always, eventually, it's just going to flake away and be gone. Um, and again, I've got a whole couple other videos for repairing those if you want to repair your own um, but eventually I just stopped selling the rubber insulation and then whatever ones I had whatever sensors or anything or cables I had with plastic insulation I just kept <laughs> I wasn't gonna I just stopped selling at a certain point just so I could hold on to them um, but those are just some things to keep in mind um, you know so you don't upset your customers or something you know maybe it maybe it was fine when you put it in a drawer two years ago but then you go to sell it and you might not notice that that rubber is starting to turn white um, and it's just it's not going to last and um, so you definitely don't want to do that so i think that's it i hope you guys found this useful and um, again i've got other videos on repairing sensors and stuff if you want to check that out so thanks for watching <laughs>